recently I went and I posted a pet room vlog where I was just kind of updating you guys on my animals and my pet room and enclosures and all that fun stuff. In that video I showed you all my brand new bioactive cat gecko enclosure. I didn't give you guys a super detailed look at it or anything because I said that this video was going to be coming soon. So uh, here it is. This is the video on how I built my bioactive cat gecko enclosure. So there you go, that is the enclosure that we are going to be setting up in today's video. So when it comes to this enclosure, I filmed the entire process start to finish of myself setting it up. I filmed myself creating the background, I filmed myself planting the enclosure and adding the geckos into it. So I know that that is what you guys came here to see, so let's go ahead and set up this cat gecko enclosure. Before we get on with that, I wanna give you guys a quick little reminder to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps me out and I know that you guys want to see some more awesome animal videos so if you're not subscribed already make sure you do that. Now let's go ahead and set up a bioactive cat gecko enclosure. So to get started we're going to be taking this 24 by 18 by 24 exoterra. So what I'm doing here is taking some cork branches and getting them ready to foam into place. Foaming the branches into place like this is going to make them really sturdy and secure. So now that the branches have been foamed and had a little bit of time to dry, this is what they look like. They're basically just floating in the enclosure right now. So now that these branches are in place, we can move on to the background. So to start, I'm just going to place some cork pieces down that I want to incorporate in the background. Now I'm going to take my Great Stuff spray foam and just start covering the entire back of this enclosure. So after you're done foaming your enclosure, you want to leave it for a day for the foam to cure and then it's going to look something like this. Now that the foam has had time to cure, it's time to go ahead and start carving away. This is going to give the background more texture and provide us a better surface to work on. And now that the background has been carved, it looks like this. For this background, I'm using dry lock, so I'm going to be painting a total of three coats of dry lock onto this background. So this is what it looks like after a first coat of dry lock, and then you want to let it completely dry before putting your other coats on. Once dry, we're going to go ahead and add coats two and then three. And with all the dry lock on, this is what the enclosure looks like. So now it's time to go ahead and paint the dry lock. You can really do this however you want, but I wanted to go for a really natural look. So all I'm using here is a little bit of brown and green paint. If you're painting your background, make sure that you're using a water-based acrylic paint. So my background is done and this is what it looks like. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this tank downstairs and get it set up for my geckos. The enclosure is now downstairs, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is add our clay balls for a drainage layer. Okay. 
Now that all of the clay balls have been added, we're going to take a bit of mesh and lay it over top to create a barrier between the substrate and the drainage. And then we're going to start adding our bioactive substrate mix. So I went and I added this little cave in. So this was like an exoterra cave. Uh, it's an old one that I have, which is why the color is pretty faded. But my plan with this cave is to uh, hopefully have it be an egg laying spot. So as you can see, it has this little removable top. So I'm hoping that if my geckos breed, Sadie will hopefully use this as an egg laying spot, making it easier for me to find the egg rather than having to search through the whole enclosure. And now who knows? She might not use it like that. I may end up having to search through the whole enclosure, but the hope is is that she will end up using this cave for egg laying, which will make it a lot easier for me to find them. And one more piece of cork, because why not? So the enclosure is now ready to start adding our plants, so let's take a look at what we have. With just a few plants, a bag of leaf litter, and a couple more branches, this tank has been entirely transformed. The plants add a lot of life to this enclosure, but I think we can add even more. So uh, let's go ahead and add some isopods. this enclosure would not be complete without Sadie and Slinky, so here they are. now been about two weeks since I first set up this enclosure, so I wanted to go ahead and give you guys a quick little enclosure tour of it. So Malaysian cat geckos are a semi-arboreal species of gecko, so when I was setting up this enclosure, I really tried to keep that in mind. So I gave them quite a lot of floor space that they could use, as well as a lot of climbing space that they can use. So obviously in the upper half of the enclosure here, we have these cork branches that I foamed in place, you know, in addition to to the 3D background that I made. And then we also have this branch that I added here. I don't know what kind of wood it is, but I do really, really like that branch. And then I do have a few other smaller branches that I added, such as this one here this one here, and then I did also add this fake vine to give them a few more things to climb on. And then if we move to the lower portion of the enclosure here, we have a lot of plants. So over in this corner here, we have a neon pothos. For the first few days when this was in the enclosure, it was kind of wilted and I was a little bit worried about it, but it's doing a lot better now. So hopefully it'll continue to grow. And my goal is to eventually kind of vine it up here so then I can have more plant coverage like in this area here. Unfortunately, most of the moss that I put in this enclosure did die off. I don't really know why. I think it just didn't really root very well. So unfortunately, 
unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of moss left but that is really the only plant that hasn't done all right so I'm okay with that so this plant right here that's like kind of under this piece of cork is a spider plant so this is just a plain green spider plant I honestly way prefer these to the variegated ones I think that the color of these ones is just really really pretty so spider plant right there then if we move over here this plant that you see with like all the round leaves I think it's super super cute this is a little uh, pilia I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right but yep that's what it is this one has been doing super super well it's even grown two new little leaves since I added it into this enclosure so I hope that this one continues to grow and it'll be really really cool if it gets nice and big right here is a lemon pixie peperomia this one is also doing really well it did have a little bit of die off when I first added it in but it's doing all right now this fern back here uh, the blue star fern is not doing too good but I'm hoping that it's just like like some initial die off and then hopefully it'll do a bit better as it establishes in this tank but who knows right now it's just kind of doing all right then we have another pothos there and we have this big plant back here I cannot remember for the life of me what it is called but it's doing well and then for like the rest of the ground we really just have that egg laying cave that I mentioned earlier a water dish and then we have a lot of leaf litter on the ground and a few cork pieces these tiny little cork pieces that I have on the ground are mainly for my isopods to hide under the geckos don't really use them at all but they help the enclosure look more natural and yeah they give the isopods some hiding spots so there you have it there is a little enclosure tour of my new bioactive cat gecko enclosure so there we have it that is how I set up my brand new bioactive cat gecko enclosure from start to finish and then also a quick little enclosure tour I had so much fun building this enclosure and it's one of my favorites that I've ever done I think that it turned out so well I am like obsessed with the background and the cork and I love the plants in it so yeah I am very very proud of this enclosure that I built and I really hope that you guys enjoyed watching me set this enclosure up almost as much as I enjoyed building it I had so much fun and yeah I really hope you had fun watching if you did enjoy this video it would mean a ton to me if you gave this video a big thumbs up and it would also mean a ton to me if you went ahead and subscribed to my channel it really helps me out so I do really really appreciate it also be sure to check out all of my social media everything will be down in the description below but for the most part it is just Emma Sam 99 and I would love to have you all over there with all of this said I am just going to go ahead and end the video here thank you all so much for watching I do really really appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in my next video